Yeah. <laughs> you want me to say, yes, right. Uh, welcome to Envision Radio. This is Robbie Respetto coming to you from downtown Charlottesville or Price Thomas. This is News Radio WINA 1070 98.9. With that, I turn it over to Price. And we are here very excited today. We got the whole team back Half. in action yeah, and uh, coming off. I guess this will be that it's Saturday when you'll hear this. So day of caring a couple of days ago, which which went well and went you well. appear to have yeah. mostly recovered 1,700 from. volunteers this year. Yeah. 1,700. Yeah, back up from COVID. So That's we're rebuilding. Great. That's really great. That's awesome. Yeah, projects. Yeah, and cool. I got zero phone calls. That's the first zero. for me in five <laughs> years. I wanted to call you to call somebody in the media, but I was yeah. very Right, see? <laughs> the instinct was still That's there. That's no longer in my contract. That's or is true. that still other duties as other assigned? Other duties as assigned <laughs> yeah, after you leave. Right. It's still, it, it bleeds into other organizations. Correct. <laughs> um, but more importantly... Sam Sanders here with hey. us. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Uh, we are doing great. Thanks for coming down and joining us. Absolutely. Great to be here. So we are, I mean, we are obviously excited about this, but the, the point of the show is for me to talk less. So we're going to let you do the heavy lifting Okay. in that regard. Um, but first and foremost, you know, I, I'm, I'm certain most people know who you, you know, who you are, have heard and read what's out there, but this is, uh, this is the deeper dive. We're trying this to get the, the word out. That's exactly right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, we'd just love to, to chat a little bit. Tell us a little bit, first and foremost, where you're from, and then we'll do, take it chronologically and sure. figure out how you got here and where we're going. Okay. Sounds good. So um, I was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's home. <laughs> Uh, that was always my beacon. My grandmother was there. So that was always how life just brought me back to that was my center. Uh, both parents are from there. Uh, my dad was military, so we traveled a lot. My, my childhood was a little chaotic. I didn't have childhood friends because we constantly moved. Mm. I was always in a state of change, moving between my father, my grandmother, and my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, so that moved me all over the country at different times. My brother flew, and I flew on planes mm. by ourselves a lot, mm. uh, going back young. and mm -hmm. forth from very young. My first flight was three days old. Three my mom, days? My mom Jeez. flew home to Tuscaloosa to birth me. <laughs> So that her mother could be there and right. then flew back to my dad. Three days? Wow. Three days. That was I think I was still at Martha Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're just going to hang out here for a little while. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did yeah. it back then a little bit. I was thinking so, about yeah. my TSA status. Yeah, so then. I've been on planes all my life, moving around back and forth. And just, uh, I feel like I am changed because my life was all about that. It was hmm. a constant state of change. So I'm all about that. Was there, as, as you reflect on your your younger years and and you know moving and having to sort of you know reintegrate and then leave and yep. come back and go i mean what what do you how do you think that in, in an era you know and as you're coming through in an era where sort of the world's always changing and then where you are geographically is always yep. changing do you see that as as something that has was you know sort of net positive or negative and i say that because mm -hmm. you know does that think that bred in you some sort of ability to just fit into different spots or was it like i never really found what I was doing because yeah. I was always bouncing. Well, it took becoming an adult to figure it out. Okay. When I was in it, I didn't necessarily like it. Um, I did all that change, all that movement in my life as a child who was shy, mm. like crippling shy. Mm -hmm. um, like the kind that you probably need to have some medical intervention yeah. to help get you to, it's Come okay to speak yourself. and do that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, but what it did over time is it allowed me to eventually calm down a little bit, not get stressed out about things, um, which is what I think I need now in my life. Mm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm using that a lot today. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I'm, I've tested myself for some of the challenges that I have faced as an adult uh, in, in career and in life. Uh, but in moving around so much, it was a constant state of uh, adaptation. Mm -hmm. The environment was changing. Everybody was different. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who I was. You get picked on being the new kid. Sure. So I, that happened a lot. I lived in Hawaii for a year, and I moved back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama after mm. that year. Oh, wow. And Huge. every teacher yeah. always introduces the new kid. He just moved here from Hawaii. Yeah. Ah, lasers. Yeah. Yeah. For sure you're going to stand out. <laughs> I got all the stupid questions. Hey, dude, right. did y'all wear uh, grass skirts to school every yeah, day? Right. Yeah, right. Do you have flip-flops? Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> dumb stuff. You know. Right. So I had to build my mantle, of course, to be mm -hmm. able to try to withstand and deal with some of that stuff and just say, that's not about me. Um, I let them have their moment and do what I can. Got a little more introspective, uh, and I think what it did is it helped me begin to see that I didn't like it. I didn't like how I felt about it. Hmm. So then I started to do things a little bit differently as I got older. When I got into high school, um, I joined the uh, journalism club and wrote for the school paper really? to make myself go and ask people questions. To go and talk to people that I would not ordinarily talk to. Yeah. I forced myself to do things that I knew I wanted to be better at. Mm -hmm. And then it translated as I got into work. Um, one of the things that I did that really changed my whole trajectory for a career, I went to a seminar that my boss was presenting, 
and it was just a community engagement seminar mm-hmm. on um, money management stuff. I've done a lot in that space, and I thought she was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I wish I could do that. That public mm-hmm. speaking yes. piece, that connecting to people. And afterwards, I told her, that you did a great job. I love that. I love being in the room with you. You have an energy. And so I want you to teach me how to do that one day. Mm-hmm. And the very next time, she put me up front. Wow. <laughs> Like she immediately like, skip, put you skip the teacher in the deep end type right. thing. Yeah, immediately put me up front, and she said, "You got it. You've been in enough of these. That you know the information. You have to trust that you know the information. Just say it however you can." Yeah. And when I got up there, I did it. I mean, I had my quirks. Things didn't go exactly how I wanted them to. She gave me the notes afterwards, and then from that point on, she said, "You're going to do these," yeah. hmm. and that is what really, really made a difference in me being willing to open up that way to ask her for that mm-hmm. help, mm-hmm. and then to allow that to do what it did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just been in that space ever since. I've been. I consider myself a work in progress. Mm-hmm. My mother is amazed by the fact that I can walk into a room with 300 people and get in front of the microphone and speak. Right. Yeah. She is totally Given amazed that, that I can were. do that. Right. That's the child that I was. Yeah. 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 And now, I mean, I still have butterflies, still have the mm-hmm. nerves. I consider that good energy, but I'm not afraid. Yeah. So yeah. Just do it. Overcome it. Yeah. I'm good at that, I think. Talk to me. So you just told a story of, of grit and resilience and all the things. Yeah. Like where... I always ask this question. He has a couple questions. He always asks. <laughs> I'm always fascinated how people develop grit. Sure. Um, does it come from our um, mentors, our parents? Like, how did you develop a sense of, of, of really being positive about what was a difficult mm-hmm. situation and even a difficult childhood with all the transition and the change? Like, yeah. somewhere in there, you made a mental decision that I'm going to take what I'm going through, which is hard, yep. and I'm going to use it to be better. Right. Right. And that's right. like a fundamental decision that yeah. we all get to it make. It is a choice. Absolutely. But not everybody makes it. That's and we right. have many examples of people who choose something different. I agree. Right. And I so agree. I'm curious where, where, if you can remember what caused that to yourself, but then just a grit mm-hmm. to, to do it. Right. Yeah. Where do you think that came from? I believe I was positive as a person, mm-hmm. just struggling with yeah. who I was and, and dealing things. with the various things that mm-hmm. happened because I've always considered myself a positive person. I always try to look for the positive. Mm-hmm. I always try to take, okay, even in that moment of somebody else would look at that and say, that was horrible. Mm-hmm. I'm always trying to figure out, well, what was that about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's something right. there. But it's just a let me, of let me find that nugget. Mm-hmm. Let me find the truth in that and mm-hmm. let me find where there's some work and then I can figure out how to do that. I just think that's in me. I, yeah. I don't know that I developed You can't that. remember a time where that yeah. wasn't your orientation. I, I don't think it was triggered in any way. I just, yeah. I do think that that's, that's just me. Um, I referred earlier as a goat for punishment. I kind of am. <laughs> like I'm willing it. I'm in this job. I mean, yeah, you took the job. Uh, take the job to be the city manager of Charlottesville. <laughs> yeah. Most people look at you and say, that's are crazy. you okay? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And I say, absolutely. I am. Yeah. I'm going to give it a shot. You that's my plan. Shot. I'm giving it a shot. Yeah. Um, I think I've just, as an adult, I've just decided I can't be afraid. And that those mm-hmm. childhood moments, I was mm-hmm. many times afraid, mm-hmm. didn't know what was going to happen. I never thought anybody was going to kill me. Yeah. But they might hit me. Yeah. And in some of those moments, they might really, really make me feel like nothing. I might cry and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think anybody would really hurt me mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I learned to just kind of deal with it. And eventually I started to figure out, how do you deal with the bully? Mm-hmm. You, Say something back. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. You've yeah. got to fi- figure out what's that. Find your voice. And, and you do it. And you do the best mm-hmm. that you can in those moments. And, and you move on. And, mm-hmm. and again, you think about the fact that it's not about you at that moment. That's them choosing to do that. When you talked about moving so frequently um, and having to make new friends, you have to develop a certain personality style that yeah. you can connect with new people quickly and build a dynamic or relationship with sure. them. I'm sure that's helped you in your current you role because you're, you're like looking meeting for with so many different yeah. people, different yeah. backgrounds, and you have to connect with them. Mm-hmm. Different. You're, I mean, you're in assessment mode constantly. Mm. I'm not going to have a relationship with this person. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be all right. You know, right. There's something there. I can, I can dig into that a little bit. I have a small circle that I've developed here. That my goal is just to be able to say, hey. Can you go somewhere with me and yeah. just get me out of this for a yeah. minute? I mean, everybody needs that. <laughs> we all I've, I've appreciated finding that yeah. uh, uh, as well. So I think you have to figure out what you need in those mm-hmm. moments. Yeah. Interesting. How did you um, make it to CNU, or where were you geographically when you came? Was that from Alabama? Did you come from Alabama? So here's Virginia? another one of those chaotic moments <laughs> in my life. You're, you're, you're gonna be like, let's do this. Right. We've been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. So my dad, me in a Marine, uh, got orders to go overseas. Okay. He left to go overseas in the middle of my senior year of high school. Okay. okay. So I left California to move to Newport News. Oof, uh, and finished high school. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. I have two cap and gown pictures. There you wow. go. That's it. As <laughs> a senior. Baby blue in California. Yeah. Emerald green. Nah. <laughs> Both of them. What part of California did you leave? I was in 29 Palms in the middle of the desert. 
Yep. That is such a Nothing switch but out. Like lizards in us. <laughs> <laughs> Into Newport News. Moving to Newport wow. News. Wow. Well, and what was interesting, so I started high school in Newport News. Mm-hmm. So ninth grade was in was in Newport News. Sure. Tenth, eleventh, and half of twelfth grade was in California. Uh-huh. And then I moved back to the same school was in the, Newport I was just News. To to the same, it was the same yep. school. Yep. <laughs> so you're same. in the ninth grade yearbook and the last one. There you go. <laughs> That's well, impressive. and I actually <laughs> I was in pictures in the yearbook, but I was not actually in the yearbook because I had missed the cutoff. <laughs> <laughs> to actually be in the yearbook. This is, is wow. like one of those like lifetime yeah. movies where we're like flipping through the thing. Like, was oh, he he's he's here? Like, like, oh, he's had a hard life. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just made me who I am. Like, we're I'm not good. certain he's okay. a real yeah. person. He those just appears just in the back. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just moments like that. Um, I have two very good friends from high school. Mm-hmm. That time at Ferguson High School in Newport News. Two friends who saved me. And I tell them that often today. Uh, so y'all are my sisters. You saved me. Yeah. There were two guys that were also in the picture that helped me out, and we lost contact over time. But the four of them were my safety net. I think yeah. that's ultimately how I coped in these moments. Mm-hmm. I just had to find who are my people. Yeah. And it was usually just a small group, and I did everything with them because that's where it was safe. And that's how I got through. Yeah. Yeah. So you get so you go to CNU, so you yeah. you stay. Yep. So that's the longest you've stayed anywhere, stayed presumably. Yeah. Stayed um, there and finished. And when was there? So you go, you know, and what was that? Was that new, different, better, worse? I mean, from just the stability, did it not matter? I mean, it just seems like there's been so what much moving and shaking. But finally, you're like, okay, that puts you in Newport News for five years, mm-hmm. presumably four yeah. and a half years. Four and a half. Did you feel like? you know, more established, were you, or were you just like wired for sound then? Were you just like, now you're just a mover. It's so you're kind of like, well, mm-hmm. it's when I started to take control of life. So, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. It, it was sure, at sure, that sure. moment. That's the end of parents really dictating what happens with you. So I was with my mom and my brother, uh, finishing high school. I walked across the street to see you because mm-hmm. the high school was right across the yep. street. I know, I know exactly yeah. where you are. Yeah. And my yeah. high school doesn't exist today, even yep. more changed. Yeah, it is the yeah. site of the Performing Arts Pavilion at CNU <laughs> at today. CNU. Yep. That's yep. where the school yep. was. Mm-hmm. So I went to CNU, graduated uh, there, met my wife uh, in that time period. She moved up from uh, Louisiana, and we worked together. So wow. we met at work. Didn't like each other. <laughs> That's how that uh, starts. You yeah. know, and then, of course, something changed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At some point. It was that twinkle in the eye. There you go. So met her, and, and that's when life began. Yeah. Um, as I graduated from high school, we had our first child. Uh, we got married, then uh, moved. We stayed in, in Newport News for a few years, but ultimately, I wanted to go to a bigger city. Mm-hmm. I had this big dream of being in a big city. I mean, this crazy, cr- shy kid still <laughs> yeah. wanted crazy stuff I love like this about yeah. you. Yeah. I still wanted this that. This dual personality. Right. Like, yeah. 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 And that's what it kind of felt yeah. like at times. <laughs> so I wanted to go to Houston. Okay. So we left here. Huh. Yeah, my wife left earlier. She went to Baton Rouge and landed there as a stopping point. And I loaded up the uh, U-Haul, had a two-year-old in the car seat, and a car attached to the back. Oh, my goodness. And we drove off you went. Oof. all the way. Oof. Stopped in Tuscaloosa to say, hey, Grandma. Yeah. And then spent some time with her. Yeah. And went on to, to Baton Rouge, thinking it was a pit stop, maybe a year or two, and then we'll get our, on our yeah. way to Houston and never left. You never left. Huh. So I ended up in Baton Rouge wow. for 18 years. That's the longest wow. I've been anywhere. Wow. Yeah. But you were born in Baton Rouge. Born in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, okay. She's, and she's from uh, the Opelousas area of of, of uh, Louisiana, which is an hour. But you have from. family. I mean, this is like yeah, you know, our an family area of the and, country. and family kind of all spread out. But yeah. that's the central point, central point is, is Alabama. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think you were gonna do, or what did you want to do? So we're mm-hmm. you know drawing this path of like moved a lot, shy kid, small circle. Man, what this is canvas that? Canvas is gonna get painted. It is so yeah, weird. Right. This, I, this, I, this I, looks I, you know it's just a like Jackson the Pollock like of a room. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, about to throw there. a big old spot yeah. in the middle. Yeah, right. <laughs> so so, I so started, did or did you think about that? Like yeah. you know what what was what you know what was the, what was the plan? Sure. Yeah. So when I um, when I started college, I thought I was gonna be a journalist. That was my dream. Okay. That was the vision. I wanted to be the black Sam Donaldson. So for anybody who's too young, you don't know who that is. He was the man. He was the, the news. man. For sure. And I wanted to be the black version of him. Gotcha. And and for that, that meant I was looking to go to war-torn countries and tell the news. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be embedded with the troops and, and just be in it. I think it's that my dad's influence yeah, in the military that I was intrigued by, maybe curious about what was his life like. If yeah, he, he never faced combat, but if he had to, what, what would, would that, that have been? been? I think yeah, I was curious. Mm-hmm. So I started college thinking that's what I was going to do. Sure. I met a professor who ran a museum, and her focus and her work was public relations. Okay. She described what her job was, and it was like magic. Yeah, like that's that what I wanted to do. Huh. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I got my degree in. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was the variety. 
yeah. in the job sure. that I was attracted to and hearing yeah. what she described. She spent yeah. a lot of time with us. It was a small class and gave us all this stuff. I graduated. I thought I was amazing. I mean, even through the shyness, I still thought I was good. Yeah. So I you was amazing because I got a degree. I mean, <laughs> somebody yeah. wants me. Yeah. I got exactly. a lot to say. Yes. So, and you worked hard for it. And I felt like I worked really hard for it. <laughs> and applied to the Richmond Times Dispatch, and they taught me a lesson. <laughs> you are nobody special. Correct. You're no amazing email. And the first job offer out of college was peanuts. Yep. And I said, how dare they? How dare they? <laughs> <laughs> I earned the right. Uh, and I Sam returned Sanders. their offer with a no thank you. Yeah. And the job that I ended up taking paid exactly what they Same. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great lesson. I Absolutely. A great like, lesson. People do not pay you a lot coming out of they college, don't. typically. Did, even with a all. degree in my mouth, yeah. they got was amazing. I was yeah. ready to go. I was going to change this world. Yes. Right. Um, so the first job that I took, so this is how things really, uh, divine intervention, I, I claim it all day long. Um, I started working for the Office of Human Affairs in Newport News. And they do a variety of human services mm -hmm. type uh, work. A government job. Yes. Isn't well, that funny? Okay. Wait, hold on. So you hold <laughs> Isn't <on>. that <laughs> funny? Yes. That <laughs> is very You see the full cycle that I is do. happening in my life I do. right divine now. Divine intervention. So, yeah. the, okay, so Richmond Times was a no offer go. was a no <laughs> that, but, that was your but dream is that were you just like all right well i guess journalism's out there, there was no other, i think i was like, so offended that i yeah. then did some research and learned oh they don't pay well yeah I, mean, I guess i didn't look at anything when i was trying to be right. a journalist so it's just a dream yeah. journalism, but yeah. but because of that exposure to uh the the professor who talked about public relations i thought well let me take this now what i did was i wrote I was, right. I was an assistant planner. Right. I had to write a newsletter. So I was still using my skills. Yeah. Okay. A lot of and writing. I, okay. I was yeah. learning things and then writing about them and yeah. getting the word out. So I was kind of in the space, but okay. not really a journalist like at directly, that point. Yeah. Um, so it was just kind of flexing. Mm -hmm. How much more of the muscle can I lean on? And mm -hmm. that's where it all started. What I didn't know is that then I was building a, an appreciation for this passion to help people. Yeah. Hmm. And that's really where the trigger happened. Yeah. Just huh. the time spent there. I attended home buyer education classes and saw the magic in that moment yeah. of teaching somebody how to buy a house. Yeah. Yep. I went into a resource mothers program mm -hmm. to see how young moms were trying to figure out how to get their lives yep. and, and, you know, so, yeah. in their control, having sure. that self-sufficiency. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, um, I drove around the city of Newport News in a 15-passenger van with lunch bags, taking them to the summer feeding program mm -hmm. and making sure that kids had a chance to eat and then understanding that oh, this yeah. might be the only meal they get today. Yeah. So it was that human services that like stuff. Yeah. And then there was, I don't know, I didn't, I don't think I knew it was there. Mm -hmm. It just came out like, hmm, hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Divine and, intervention. Yeah. And it just yeah. set me on this track. Um, when I made the move, uh, also young and dumb, I didn't like my supervisor. Yeah. Had a moment, yeah. told the boss all about I like mean, really I, yeah, I guess that could happen between the two of you. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you what I really yeah. think. Well, yeah, yeah, right. We, <laughs> we never had those. Yeah. It was pretty pretty open from we the We did fine. From yeah. the well, I mean, jump. he always told me how he felt, and well, I had to so, deal with it. So there you go. <laughs> I think if you have the outlet, you might not do the stupid things <laughs> that I have done. I walked in one day and brought him oh this well-written six-page letter all about her. Oh boy. <laughs> Six pages. I love it, really. That was good. I Nicely like words. Tight. That was good. So I wrote it all up and took it in there to him. He called her in and she said, Well, if he's unhappy, he can go. That's right. And That's he said, Well, thank you. Some lessons. Another learned, lesson right? learned. Wow. Yes. So I learned you shouldn't try to quit. You shouldn't even help <laughs> you people find help work you quit through it. either. You just <laughs> decide when it's time for you to go and just go. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, I've, I've been learning lessons. Yeah. I really do see that. Um, but I liked how, like, you have this always this bigger vision for what mm -hmm. you, you're very hopeful. Mm -hmm. Like, in your own imagination, always. you felt like, hey, if I'm honest and I present my case, then that's going to land on some yeah. ears yeah. that may make a difference. But no matter what the even chaos if they feels didn't, like, I think that's what people but want. But, you know, you you have that sense about yeah. you, that idealism, yeah. which I think you kind of have to have in this yeah. world because the world's crazy and kind of broken sometimes. And what I'm working on is trying not for it to be naive yeah. at the same you time. You want to be rooted in I want to be the reality yeah. of the situation. I, I, I strive to be real um, in the situations, and I'm, I'm looking for what is this about? But idealism, there there, it can do. be used in a really useful way because yeah. it can help you see a better world than actually exists, right? And That's we all want, I want that. Yeah, I got two but kids in this world. Correct. I and want, you want it to them. be around for them. Yeah, and, yeah, but to have the architecture of, of thought yeah. to create that is yeah. something beautiful, right. even if, to your point, 
it doesn't always have the results you hope for. I want to be, I'm in the army. I want to be in the army of change. If I can help, I'm here. Correct. If I'm up front, I'm happy to lead. If that's what you right. need, I'm willing right. to do that. Right. Um, and I want to turn back and help those that want to come forward and do the same. I don't need the spotlight all to myself. I've learned to not appreciate that as much. I think mm. that's still that shyness yeah. at times mm. that I don't need the spotlight. Yeah. If you want it, have it. Right. Let's talk about you what you're going to say. You just want the platform where you can yeah. make something happen. Let's do what it is that we're going to do. So. Yeah. Um, I don't. I still at that moment. I don't know that I knew for sure the work was exactly the work that I wanted to do. Right. Um, I got into collections for a minute when I couldn't mm -hmm. land a job, so I just took a job because I knew how to yeah. talk to people. Yeah. You know, so I need yeah. to go in the store and make a payment. Can you do that? <laughs> I'll call you back next week. Yeah. I mean, I had to do that. Sure. I did it. Yeah. They paid well. I had to eat, yeah. and I had a kid. Yeah. Um, so did whatever I needed to do, but um, I landed at Consumer Credit Counseling Services of Louisiana. And the first part of the job I didn't like, that was helping people trying to figure out how to pay their bills. And right. I mean, it was good. I was serving. I was helping people. Right. But when I left that role and got into the education department, it became about teaching people. Mm -hmm. And I was back in front of the room right. presenting and teaching people how to manage money, mm -hmm. how to use that to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. Mostly aimed at if you want to buy a house, my kids laugh at me now because I was recorded one day. And said, I want to buy a house. I said, sure you can. And they I won't live that down. They still <laughs> sure say it to me. Yeah, but, right. Because yeah. the reality was I can teach you how to do it. Yeah. Now, it may be hard. It may be a little bit easier than the next person, but I can mm -hmm. get you there. And I spent years of my career doing just mm -hmm. that, right. just teaching people how to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And I always started my class with, I know y'all are here because you want to buy a house. That mm -hmm. is not the lesson for tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The lesson is how to keep it once you get it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I can help you get it. That, yeah. I'm going to tell you, that's easy. I can get you in the house. Mm -hmm. Keeping it mm -hmm. is the test. Yeah, that's where it's going <clears> to <throat> work. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. going to be hard. Life is not easy. Right. And when you have a mortgage to pay, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. yeah. So I spent a lot of time just yeah. trying to do that. I was talking about this is the most authentic me that I've ever yeah. been. In those classes are the moments where I think that came to life. Mm -hmm. huh. I felt like I owed it to the people that were in this room, mm -hmm. striving to achieve what we do refer to as the American dream, mm -hmm. but one that we struggle with. Yeah. yeah. Specifically. Yeah. And in that moment, just wanting to say, it's serious. Mm -hmm. We can get you there. I can get you all the help that is available and make mm -hmm. it where you can afford it. Mm -hmm. But life is still going to happen. And this is the easiest thing for you to lose when something goes wrong. Do you so attribute kind of your your current posture to to the way you grew up? And I say that because you're you're obviously like very thoughtful when you speak. It's very deliberate. Like you 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 could tell you were just like a watcher mm -hmm. and you put the pieces together and then right yeah. you know and, and and i wonder i don't know if there's a real way to answer this but i just wonder if like let's say you you know lived in a place and became you know the center of attention and that kid mm -hmm. it seems like there's like a more of a jump to action in that kind of mindset mm -hmm. right it feels like you're very pragmatic in a sense of like i'm fine to, to just absorb for a while because i'm not uncomfortable with silence yep. you know and, and i think yep. that sometimes in especially in a position where you're in where you're having stuff thrown at you all the time there can be a real proclivity to be like i gotta go solve this mm -hmm. right do you think that benefits you because mm -hmm. you're you're just okay mm -hmm. with being like i i'm happy to just let it wash right you and then me. we'll start to work on man it man is reading oh, man. That's he's, very good he's, smart. he's a smart <laughs> man <laughs> very good smart man. yes i agree i do i think yeah. i think what i bring into this this role um that i hope to continue to use is it's important for me to listen one so that i can hear mm -hmm. uh and then it's more important about what do i hear yeah. before mm -hmm. i jump to action mm -hmm. Because I can jump to action. I feel like I'm an action-oriented person, but I'll get myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I'll jump too far too fast. I'll jump to the wrong thing, and that's yeah. not really solving the problem. Right. And I think in this role, you really need to be a little more pragmatic um, because everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. And everyone's ready to say something. Everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> and everyone has an opinion, and they want to tell you that yours is wrong. Yeah, right. right. And But they're paying me for mine. Right. So I'm trying to use it and do this, and mm -hmm. that's what is, is there. And I have um, I have found in the exploratory work that I've done in the two years that I've been in the city manager's office, and this is with people away from here in, mm -hmm. in other uh, seats around the country, there's a level of arrogance that comes with taking this job mm -hmm. yeah. that some people use. I try not to use that. Yeah, I In my mind, they want to speak to, I'm the city manager, so I'm making the decisions, and it's the way I say it, and that's right. going to be it. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not trying to be that person. Mm -hmm. One, I don't want all that. I don't want that burden of if it doesn't go right, it's all <laughs> it's yeah, right. right, right, right. So I'll be honest right. about that. Right, right, right. But I am interested <laughs> in 
bringing people together and having a conversation about things because that's what I've done so much of. The yeah. past 20 years of work has just been that. Mm. Uh, the organization that I ran for 15 years and worked there for three additional years, we never did anything by ourselves. Mm -hmm. It was deliberate. We right. chose to not do anything by ourselves. <laughs> we were born out of a, a collaborative effort to mm -hmm. bring a resource to a community in need. Mm -hmm. And then we live that life. And the organization has been around for 30 plus years at this mm -hmm. time. Uh, and for me, that was an honor to be in that seat because of the people who came before me. Two directors before me were amazing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I could have been walking around like, oh, I can't do this job. Yeah. They're just two big personalities. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard for me to fill yeah. their shoes. Right. I quickly decided I don't care about their shoes. Yeah. I got my own. Got mm -hmm. own. I'm going to mm -hmm. walk in mine. I'll respect theirs, and I'm going to do it my way. Sure. And when I left, the person that came behind me, I said, everybody's going to tell you all about me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you right now because that's what they do. They're that's going to tell thing. you all about me. Package that away mm -hmm. and do you. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. the best that you can and forget about my shoes. Yeah. Wear yours. They Absolutely. Fit. It's so important. Yeah. Felt the same way when I got to United Way. Absolutely. First, I've been there 30 years. I mean, how, you can't It's feel hard to come somebody. behind somebody like that. Yeah, you can't yeah. feel somebody's shoes like that, nor should yep. you, right? So thank, yeah. that, thank that person for their service. <laughs> I'm here now. What would you like to talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it really is that's like it. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious. You said taking this job, some people would say that that's crazy. And certainly there's... Oh, no, I heard that. <laughs> this legacy lot. of um, well, chaos. Especially at the time. You, yeah, yeah, the timing of it was, Correct. It's was been, particularly fraught. I do think like having Michael there was kind of like a solve on a wound. Like mm -hmm. Michael had a, a personality such that you know, mm -hmm. everything kept running and things kind of simmered down. We got mm -hmm. a different council. That was pragmatic um, me time. Yep, there you go. Yep. I see? was watching Correct. to see was it possible. <laughs> I, 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 I've been watching to see what you were watching, watching too. To yeah. see if it was possible. I've been kind That's of wondering right. how yeah. you were going to think through that. Um, and definitely my observation is you're a watcher. Even seeing you at the chamber event, I'm like, this man takes it in and then he decides how he's going to operate and navigate. And I didn't know where it came from today. And now I, I better understand that. Um, how do you, so your, your leadership style, how do you want to kind of take like, Kind of what we've been through. We've been through some things. There's still, right. I would say, healing that needs to happen. Absolutely. I don't think that we're just all healed because yep. things are quiet right now. Can't flip a um, switch. Mm. Yeah, you can't. So what what would you say your strategy is? Obviously listening, observing, but what is your dream? What is your vision for the city? What do you want to see happen in Charlottesville? Yeah, I mean, part of what I did um, when, when the council had the press announcement, um, and that was a very interesting moment for me <laughs> because to have all five council members say very positive things about me mm -hmm. meant a lot um and i know that even that could be read wrong in the community sure. because then okay he's going to do what they want him to do yeah of course <laughs> you don't know me then <laughs> yeah that ain't how that right. yeah you're gonna lose either way yeah, 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 yeah. Right. you can't win, can't yeah. win so <laughs> i i knew that i couldn't let that be and i heard a couple of comments about that and that's fine i mean yeah. people can feel the way they want to feel about it i have to show them who mm. i am yeah. i know that um my desire would be of course that I don't need help. We, we had this a little bit earlier, too. I really don't think I need a whole lot of help identifying problems because I think people have been very good at identifying Yeah, they've they, articulated mm, those. They've really, really done <laughs> well at you know, that. More yeah. than a few mm -hmm. people have said yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Show. I just think oh, that it's, like, yeah. it's there. I mean, it's yeah. there. we know there's yeah. a laundry list. And, yeah. and part of what I want to do maybe is just to try to assemble what I think those are and what yeah. are some of the bigger ones and some of the more complicated ones. But it's it's the solutions work. I'm a yeah. solution solutions oriented person. Yeah. My goal is to figure out are we doing something? Mm -hmm. Is it working? Is it doing what we want it to do? What more do we think we can get this to do? And is there something else we should try? Mm -hmm. And let's deploy something else. Like yeah. keep dropping trial balloons. Let's see if we can find a way to do something else about it. I'm yeah. open to that idea. Yeah. I'm not a person who just says, well, this is the only way to do it. Yeah. I've never believed that. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had to work on me and my leadership style of not wanting to dictate things and, and let people get there. As long as you help me see that you can get there, that's all I want is you there. Can mm -hmm. you get there? Mm -hmm. Take the path that gets you there. Yeah. Um, I think part of the community work is to figure out what is it? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it going to take for us to be able to accept that it's not that bad anymore. I'm not dismissing that it's, it has been. Mm -hmm. How do we get to it not being that anymore? And then can we turn a corner? Yeah. Can we turn a corner where we feel like it's okay to not say all the negative things and to actually celebrate the positive things? Hmm. Um, we have positive things here. As we've talked about, this is a moment for sharing 
just black excellence in this yeah, community. Absolutely. If you don't do it, nobody else is really jumping. I feel like you just kind of have to jump in. I mean, that's how Price and I we're like, we're just going to do this do show. This Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. We're just going to do this thing and we're going to create positivity in right. our community and we're going to let the ripple effect of mm-hmm. that be felt. Like, what else? You just, you it's know, the can work. You, do? you just got to do the work. You got to do everything. And, do and I'm not afraid of the work. I've never no. been afraid of the work. Um, <laughs> when when this opportunity presented itself and because my life just isn't normal it just doesn't happen <laughs> like yeah, a straight great. line yeah even taking this job i didn't apply for it right yeah. it didn't even happen it just like found that. you it just happened and I was yeah. like, man that's just keep happening to me yeah. yeah it was just that moment what's your destiny it's obviously your calling card i guess right? i accept the it. things are just you know divine that, intervention the like the hands it's one that thing are on my life <laughs> i accept them so accept and them? i appreciate them <laughs> right just but sometimes I, give me a little glimmer where are we going yeah, like where, where are we going, going? it's happening here yeah but when i call my wife and talk to her about even doing this she's like you know you want to do it <laughs> i was like lady don't tell yeah, me that yeah you know you want to do it you've always wanted to do it she's like you know you want to do it i said Mm, yeah, mm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you, you know do. you, you want to do, do it. Yep. When we left, when we left Virginia to go to Louisiana, it was the same moment. Yeah. I got to Baton Rouge, and I forgot to tell you, two years <laughs> after getting there, mm-hmm. I was moving. Yeah. Right. We moved to Birmingham. Right. I lived yeah. in, t- in Birmingham for two years. Wow. My boss called me in and said, "Hey, you're from Alabama." I said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> He's like, "Well, we're going to open an office in Birmingham." I said, I'm not from Birmingham. <laughs> you know, it's, there's yeah. like from a different more, it's, like a whole, it's a whole state, <laughs> right? One is like, modern yeah. and one is not. Yeah, right. And he right. said, well, um, we want you to go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I went. Yeah. yeah. Packed up the U-Haul again. We yeah. moved to Birmingham. I stayed yeah. out there for two years. When that didn't work out, he said, you want to come back? I said, yeah. okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> right. Because that's me. That's, that's my you. life. That's you. So we moved back. It's just been, I'm willing to take a risk. Yeah. I'm willing to try. My goal is to give it my best. Yeah. When when I walk away from this job, whenever that is, the right moment I comes. hope to be able to look back and say, I did everything that I knew I could at least attempt to do, yeah. whether it worked or not. I yeah. did everything that I could. When I left the job that I was at for 15 years, I chose to leave. Yeah. They liked me. They were satisfied. Yeah. I was not. Mm-hmm. I wanted more. I wanted more results. I wanted more change. I wanted more impact for the people in the area yeah. that I was working with, and it wasn't happening. That was my COVID moment. Mm-hmm. I learned in COVID it was time to move on. Yeah. Mm. So that's why I made that move. Um, but I was frustrated, and I learned that I don't want to be in a job and be frustrated. Yeah. And I was frustrated and angry probably the last three years of my time there. Mm. Time to go. So in this role, my desire would be to not become so frustrated <laughs> that I might be ready to go. We'll see. People aren't making right. it easy, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. Um, but, but this yeah. is this is the hardest job I've ever had. I can openly admit that. I was going to say, is it, it the is hardest job? It is absolutely the hardest career. job that I've ever had. Yeah. I did not think that's what I was looking for when I yeah. made this move. Yeah. Uh, I came here thinking that I could make a difference. My intention is to try to make one. Mm-hmm. The question is, how big a difference can I make? Um, but I'm going to give it everything that I have. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best you can hope for. I mean, yep. what you just said, right? Like, that's, that's the best you can hope for. Yep. If you are just joining us, this is Envision Radio from News Radio 989, 1070 AM WINA. Price and Ravi here with city manager for a long time, Sam Sanders. <laughs> so let me ask you this. And and you said something. I'm going to try and triangulate two things here. So there's obviously well-published sort of turmoil in, in the mm-hmm. city manager's office. And there's been, I, I think, four or five since 2017. I think I'm, I, I think, think I, so, if right? I remember what the Daily Progress said, I am number eight in seven years. Good grief. I think I am number so eight. So that's not an, an incredibly not confidence-inspiring <laughs> statistic. Yep. Okay. So, and, and you and, and you have been in the city manager's office since Two years. since 2021. 21. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're you're watching that play out yep. internally. Yep. Okay. So you are sort of like living in a house that's on fire. Absolutely. And then someone's like, hey, man, you want to like be in charge of the house? And your response is, cool. Right? <laughs> well, first, <laughs> first it was no. The first time I was asked, I said, nope. Okay. No, not doing it. Nope. Right. But then, uh, so our the other deputy, Ashley Marshall, and I actually ran the city as the city manager for three months. So we mm-hmm. were forced to do it. Because right. Because the guy who was you have hired to. would not come. Yeah. <laughs> you would not oh, come. Right. right. So I remember that. Yeah. You yeah. guys were interim sharing it. I remember yeah. Ashley. We were shared up. interim uh, city manager. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. For 90 days. That's so right. let me ask you this, and you said something, and I'd venture to get your take on this too, because yeah. I think that in the work that, that we all do, mm-hmm. right, being city manager and being in charge of nonprofits, is is it fair to say that there is some level of 
arrogance involved and we have to look mm-hmm. at each other or look at ourselves and say yeah i'm absolutely the right person to you, you know in our case mm-hmm. raise money and help yeah. families and yep. try and change in sort of yeah. you know generational poverty yeah, and you're saying right. yeah i could take this city that's mm-hmm. that's had a lot of problems and no stability at the top i'm the right person to do that I think when we talk about that, we, we talk about it as it's sort of like a negative personality trait. But is right. it necessary? I mean, do you have to have some of that? Because otherwise, I mean, you have to believe you can do it. So you so what to. is that line, at least for you? Yeah. Because you've also said that, and I've said this publicly too, that like, I, I'm i I'm not the guy to solve all the problems. Right. I'm, right? Like, that's I know right. what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good right. at. And that's why I married the woman I married, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's be very clear about that. Go. But But where is that line for you about mm-hmm. like, you know, where confidence is able to sort of breed success before it dips into that spot yeah. where all of a sudden you're sort of making wacky sure. unilateral decisions. Mm. The way I look at it is have it, don't be it. Have the okay. arrogance. Okay. So that means you are, you sure. can accept it. The awareness that I am arrogantly approaching an opportunity to do something mm-hmm. and I should be questioning, well, why not this person? Why not? Never? Mm-hmm. I don't need to. It's me. Right. Yeah. Anyone. yeah. But then you don't have to be arrogant hmm. in doing the work. Okay. Because that's where you lose people. I would agree. That's when you start to see that people are looking at you saying, well, who does he think he is? Right. Sure. I mean, me coming in and people looking at him like he he does not understand. I've said, mm-hmm. and I will continue to say, one, it would be helpful if you ask me who I am and what am I about. That's yeah. my story. Mm-hmm. You don't know. I might tell yeah. you some things. And you're like, oh, he's been there. He's sure. done yeah. some things. And I have. Right. I've lived a life. I've been here 51 life. years. Yep. 52 years and a couple weeks. Yes. <laughs> so I've been through some stuff. Right. And even in the, the childhood that I've had where dad was military, so he was middle class. My grandmother, that was poverty. Sure. Yeah. And yep. my mother was a single mom, so she was just on the edge of just not being edge. poor by herself. Right. But she worked at Newport News Shipbuilding yeah. with men all day long every day. Yeah. And tore her body up just mm-hmm. trying to feed us. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've got perspective. Mm-hmm. I have various things in life that I can speak to as own struggles that I've been through and I understand. So my goal is to help people relate to that Mm -hmm. whenever I need to share those things and to lean on those things. So that's what I mean by have it. Yeah. Just don't be it. Right. I don't need to come out and tell you, well, you know, your problem isn't that bad (laughs) because I can tell you how bad it could be. Right. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) not so it doesn't help. Sure, sure. Experience. Yeah. And and I'll I'll be honest. When I first got here, I was doing that. Yeah. I actually I got here and I was Mm -hmm. like, what are these people mad about? I mean, Mm -hmm. fussing about this. Let me tell you something that's real hard. Right. It's so mean. It's so green. They are walkable streets. (laughs) They're spending money on this. They're spending money on that. Yeah. But that was when I had to shut up. Right. Listen. Yeah. So as I stepped back and I listened to more and I understood all of it, I don't have to agree with it. I just have to accept some of it, have mm-hmm. to appreciate it. But as a child of the South, yeah. high schools in Alabama, mm-hmm. living in Birmingham, I mean, the stomping grounds of all yeah, the things. All the things. Sure. Um, and then I can associate with, mm-hmm, and Thomas Jefferson put his finger on the map and yeah. said, mm-hmm. That's This is going to be my land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I get it. Certain outcomes occur. Yes, from that I get that. I mean, I recognize that. And it is very yeah. complicated. I mean, UVA is the Ivy League that it yeah. wants to be mm-hmm. and all that type stuff. Yeah. That's his creation. Yeah. I get it. So I can separate some of that and just focus on, okay, but. How is that manifesting in our community? What yeah. is it doing? What is it yeah. causing? What are the things that we can do to just to try to reconcile with that? Because mm-hmm. our history is our history. Mm-hmm. And this country has a very rich and complicated history. Mm-hmm. There are problems all over the place. And I felt like in growing up and moving back and forth, especially, I mean, choosing Louisiana too, I didn't get too far away from yeah. that. I mean, sure. it was stomping ground for a whole lot as well. It was like my wife and I talk about it all the time. We like, cut racism with yeah knife. yeah and serve oh, yeah. it up on a platter Absolutely. like everywhere you go sure. you feel it you see yeah. it and then here it was like mm, it's a little different it's a slow summer i've heard people describe <laughs> yeah, it as a slow it summer is. and it's like it's always oh, there but it's not like blatant. oh is that what that was it's, it's oh, more okay. polite it's yeah. more polite yeah. so mm-hmm. then you so that's yeah. when you have that moment of awareness and mm-hmm. you're like okay i'm beginning to understand more i get it okay mm-hmm. fine and then i stopped that's yeah. again. So I might have offended folks in the beginning, and I tried to express. I'm not saying that it's not true. It's not real. I'm just saying I don't necessarily understand what it is that you're saying, because yeah. there were so many references to Thomas Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just that was part of my struggle. I just yeah. kept hearing the reference. Yeah. I'm like you're talking about the president. <laughs> not, well, and I think we, for, I mean, people who have lived in Virginia or yeah. from Virginia forget that that's yeah. that is a very sort of deep. I mean. I, someone said to me once that history is universal and deeply mm-hmm. personal. And I mm-hmm. think that we forget that unless you grew up in sort of 
mm-hmm. you know, this area of the country, mm-hmm. Thomas Jefferson was just the third president of the United States. Right. So unless you've been steeped in that, and you mentioned that to me too, you're like, when I came here, I did, I just, I, I knew who he was, but California. I didn't like that was yeah. not a Virginia. part of the I was teaching. Like, what right? is happening yeah, here? Right, right. It just wasn't Civil a part War? of the thing. They barely even taught that in high school yeah, in California. Exactly. Right. Right. Anyway, right. Right. Yeah. But I think we forget that sometimes, right? right? And, and I think it's yeah. that that sort of everybody's kids mm-hmm. the cutest syndrome, or like my problem being the most present thing to me. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time understanding that it's not the most present thing yeah. to you. Correct. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and then if you can at least try to evolve. So I listen mm-hmm. and I feel like, okay, I get it. I I can change how I talk mm-hmm. about it, how I acknowledge it and understand it. And then re- and then really turn it back into, okay, but there's still work there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's the work? Yeah. That's and that's, yeah. that's really what it gets back to. And identifying the list of problems, which ones do I want to take off the list and start working on? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a big task because we got some problems. A yeah. small place. I describe it, yeah. and I will continue to. Charlottesville punches above its weight. Class. Right, <laughs> always in, in every a lot of ways. That they I was about to say, in, in a lot of ways, like, yeah. and it's by choice. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So in accepting the job, I acknowledged that. So then I had to make sure that I was ready for that because mm-hmm. that means I'm not going to get to work on just one thing. Mm-hmm. And there's some city managers they pick one initiative and that's all they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't have that luxury. You don't have that luxury. I'm going to have to do more than one thing. And, and there are things that are in your face that we have stated that is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And you've got to do something about that. Mm-hmm. I just happen to have like 10. Sure. That's the thing. Council just adopted a strategic plan. They have nine strategic outcome areas. Wow. If I four or five it, would be plenty. If right. I could have had my yeah. way, yeah. and my training tells yeah. me they should have only picked four. Yeah, yeah. four or five would have been plenty. Yeah. I, know, I, was right? go, I was going for three. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, you yeah. want to pick four because three, you know you can yeah. do go. one okay. you're going to make a progress. Okay. Okay. And you're five right. is a big right. stretch. Right. Right. Four to five is the right <laughs> amount. They have yeah. nine yeah. strategic outcome areas, and on top of that, a commitment to Jedi. So we're going to double down. Yeah. And... So that means there's 10. That's yeah, not nine. There's, there's 10. 10. Right. Mm-hmm. So then I'm trying to figure out how am I going to lead a charge with 10? Yeah. Sure. Which are just like, that's impossible. Yeah. yeah. And in the back of my mind, I say, you know, that's impossible. Right? <laughs> yeah. Impossible. And then I have to, and for me, because I'm the planner and mm-hmm. I immediately go to, all right, well, they've given me my marching order. Correct. Well, you mm-hmm. can phase a so phased approach, perhaps. You start, you start be looking at it exactly, exactly that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Short term right. wins, long term goals. I put together my work plan. Yeah. Yeah. I produced the work, work plan, plan tied yeah. to all of those yeah. uh, outcome areas. Yeah. And I right. handed it to them. I said, Is this what you were thinking? I bet they yeah. read it too. They read it. Oh, Did they, they read really? it? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's they read impressive. it. They want to know what I'm going to do. Yeah, how you're going to do it. Because one, they're still concerned about what's happening in the past. Sure. One city manager, I believe, got a work plan that had like 75 things on it. Wow. That didn't go so well. Good. Wow. Mine has about 30. Yeah. Yeah. So. I didn't. It has I didn't to be something you can that, implement. You got to be able to implement the stuff, right? And that then was have the key. Some tactical goals well, that you can achieve. And <laughs> what I chose to do in oh, that, man. and I'm still finalizing it, and I'm sharing it with the public. It'll be in the city manager's report, so the public can mm-hmm. see it as well. Um, I identify more than me because mm-hmm. it's not about me. Mm-hmm. I'm like the I'm the captain of the yeah, ship. Absolutely. There's some things I need to do, and I'll be working on. But it's also identifying who on the team is going to be doing all these different things. Who's yeah. pulling the various levers mm-hmm. to make these things move. So in the allocation box, I have me and others mm. because those are going to be the ones that I'm working on. That may be my thought leader. That may be the point who's leading this particular project yeah. or whatever. So trying to show them that. Um, and it's just me bringing what I've done in the past mm-hmm. here in this version. I laid it all out. It's like, well, this has got to be measurable, you know, smart. Yeah. We got to have strategic, measurable, actionable, yeah. realistic, smart goals, time man. Bound. Yeah. Yeah, I've talked Absolutely. about smart goals you know, all the time. All that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we got to have yep. smart goals. So I laid all that out and I put it in yeah. front of them, and I'm going to finalize that. I'm sharing it with my lead team mm-hmm. at our meeting at the beginning of October. Mm-hmm. And then I'm asking them, now, where's yours? Yeah. I yeah, need we do to the see yours. Thing. You Everybody's roll it down. Everybody, Everybody's I roll it down gotta too. do their version. Everybody's gotta do their and part. I'm telling them because I'm me, you don't have to do it like I did it. You just have I don't, to do it. I don't <laughs> mandate that you do <laughs> yeah. it exactly like me. Yeah. I want you to file something with me that shows where are you going to get by mm. the end of this fiscal year. Mm-hmm. That's your roadmap. Just I just want to know you. what it is. We have the same way of doing business. Yep. Same with my team. Yep. So I'm 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 learning the team, mm-hmm. and the same way we talk about the city's been through a lot. The city organization has been through. A lot. Hmm. Yeah, I've got a thousand sure. employees, and many of them have PTSD. Yeah, yeah. sure, truly. Yeah, and I've used the yeah. language. I walked in the room and told them. I said, "Look, I don't mean anything by this, but I think some of you are suffering from PTSD." Right. Yeah. So yeah. that means it is it is incumbent upon me to figure out 
how do we work with that? Sure. How do we treat that? How do we recover from that? So in using that, I'm owning that. I know you've been through some stuff. And it's, I have to be careful how I get you where we're trying to go because you may feel like there's a resurgence of the same mm-hmm. things that went wrong before. Right. So I had to be conscious of that. Yeah, the triggers, right? Yeah. Triggers, yeah. So I'm, I'm practicing that. They they like to wrap me on the knuckles, too. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, you're a little top down. Okay, thank you for the note. Let's, yeah. let's, let's sit down and talk about <laughs> let's it. Let's talk about it. What yep. you want to talk about? Yeah. You want to talk about this? Let's talk yeah. about it. So right. I've been able to do some of those things. I'm willing to pivot. I'm mm-hmm. willing to step back and reboot. Um, and I, I say that because I'm willing to do that with the community as well. Yeah. You want to tell me something that... My desire is I'm just I'm not that loud person. Right. Yeah. My mother is. Yeah. My brother is. Really? Yeah. I'm the quiet yeah, one. Yeah, the quiet <laughs> one. I've always been the quiet one. Softer touch. So yeah. for me, shoot it straight. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. my dad was that person. He had mm-hmm. a sharp tongue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I get that from yeah, him. Yeah, so you get that. But my mother is tough. Yeah. So I try to have that too wherever I need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to having a conversation, just tell me. Yeah. I, and I said it during the press conference. Like, if you mad, tell me what you're mad about. Right. I can deal with it. Yeah, get it out on He's the like, table you know so what? we can try to. I think you're a horrible project. person. Well, could you tell me why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Some, like, like, I'm not going to own that I'm a horrible that, person right. until you show me I yeah. did something that makes me right. feel that way. Yeah, right. absolutely. If there's something that you're mad, tell me what it is. And if you can tell me in a way that you can ensure that I got it, yeah. I promise you I'll do something with yeah. that. Yeah. But if I just get yelled at and yelled at, respect, and it's going to be man. hard have to do something. Sure. Yeah, you got to respect. And, and respect helps, mm-hmm. but it's also hard to ask for it because yeah. then people say, well, you shouldn't be saying civility and all that type of stuff. So I don't. But I'm just saying mm-hmm. if you if you want to really get the change that you're seeking, you need to make sure I understand what change you want me to make happen because mm-hmm. you obviously are telling me because you think I can do something. Mm. You believe mm. that there's some possibility that these two can hands can make some kind something of happen. Yeah. If I don't get the message, you'll never get what you want. Mm. Yeah. That's what we got to remember. So mm. I think that's part of how I'll deal with having various conversations yeah. um, with some of our more animated people sure. in the community yeah. that want to talk. I'll talk to anybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious because the amount of stakeholders that you need to interact with mm-hmm. is so diverse. Mm-hmm. Charles Hill, to your point, punches above its weight class. So mm-hmm. you've got incredible wealth. Absolutely. And a lot of these folks don't even live here. I mean, they have mm-hmm. a home here, but they're working wherever. But they yep. still have a lot of feelings about their... That's right. Then you have folks that have been here for generations that have yep. dealt with poverty and racism and all the things. Yep. And then you have everything in between, including the university. Yep. Right? So it is, in its own way, a very complicated... <laughs> City. <laughs> and like I a know restaurant because, that's like we got Mexican food and correct. spaghetti and right. cereal. That and menu like, is way too menu big. Is <laughs> way too big. But right. as a leader in this community, yeah. I deal with what I just described See? every day. That's what I tell you, right? He, he, Ooh, well, well and he, <laughs> he, he's We're gonna, all leaders. He's gonna, We're he's, all leaders. He's, he's going to do it in his own in his own way, right? Like we walk in a world that that's that's so that's yeah. the universe we're existing in Mm -hmm. um for you it's you know different because they want to see social impact and outputs from my work his work but for you it's a little different right because every every stakeholder is wanting something to your point that's different that's right you've got the developers who want to see a thriving Mm -hmm. downtown corridor right right you've got the human service folks are like we have a homeless problem solve it like Mm -hmm. those right there are two opposing forces right how (laughs) just just for starters right um how do you think like how do and i think you can do it because of the childhood you just described You've been put in so many situations from the time you were so tiny Mm -hmm. where you had to navigate relationships with completely different humans Mm -hmm. from completely different spaces and still build some kind Mm -hmm. of consensus. Right. How do you see yourself in this role that you find yourself in building those strong relationships with the developers because Mm -hmm. they help the tax bases and the Mm -hmm. tax basis is what takes care of the homeless problem. People don't want to talk about it, but like, let's just connect the dots. Right. So can we frame this Um, question by like just one more simpler question of what is your job? (laughs) <laughs> well, okay, let's do that in a minute. Yeah, I do want that. Yeah, let's I do, do that. Because as I'm realizing, the more we talk and I'm You're like right. reading stuff, let's and I'm like, that. what in the hell? Like, no, what does the city, city manager do? Right. Yeah, so, and good. I think my question, maybe you can <laughs> yep. answer them together or however you want to do it. But just like, what again is your vision uh-huh. from being able, because you have a responsibility to all those stakeholders, Everybody. right? So how do you walk into a room where some of our local developers, I won't name names, can build that rapport with you and be like, who you're talking about. We, we know there's several of them. One of them walks them all every day, right? Mm-hmm. The mayor, these unofficial mayor. Like, how do you build those relationships where they can trust and know that you yeah. got their interest? Because we need we need all the people, right? right? And then how do you also hear, you know, some of our community activists who are like, it's broken. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work for all the people Y'all here. You don't get and it. You don't, you don't care. get it. And you have a responsibility yep. to do better. And right. and I deal with those folks and I and I agree. But how can we hear the diversity of those voices? Sure. And we can't solve all the problems, 
But how can we build stronger relationships mm-hmm. where we can start, to your point, to go down mm-hmm. a path of like working together yeah. for something different and better ultimately, right? So, and then, by the way, what's your job? Right. So I'll, I'll get that. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Uh-huh. So if I want to identify the beacon on the hill, where mm-hmm. we're trying to get, mm-hmm. the word is trust. Yeah. Trust. Because That's I why I said trust at all the levels, right? It's all the levels. Yeah. It is truly trust. Yeah, it's, really. it's how do you even get all these different people to understand that you can connect to them where they right. are on the things that they're highlighting and then do right. that work. But as you were describing that, um, again, what's crazy about my life is all those different audiences <laughs> uh-huh. and relationships uh-huh. and, and engagements that I must, I'd been doing that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the job that I had before that I never knew was leading me to this one. Was preparing was exactly you for that. this very moment. That's exactly what I did. Gotcha. So the work I did in Baton Rouge at Mid City Redevelopment Alliance um, was the area right outside of our downtown. Mm-hmm. There's forty thousand people that lived in this part of the city. Two hundred and some odd thousand make up the whole city, mm-hmm. and it was where wealth and poverty hit. Mm. Yeah. Dividing yeah. line as in any community, it's a railroad track or a road that divides poverty okay. and wealth. Where mm-hmm. well, Florida Boulevard was that line. Gotcha. Everybody to the south pretty much was wealthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody to the north was poor. Gotcha. Most of the people to the north were black. Mm-hmm. We had other minorities, but the majority of them was black, and it was really deep poverty. Yeah. All kinds of issues. Um, and the geographic boundary that was our organization spilled into both sections. Sure. Yeah. So I had two constituencies. My unofficial title was the mayor of Mid-City. Mm-hmm. Right. People would laugh and say that that's what I was. Right. And I was mm-hmm. like, stop saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would go to civic association meetings with the well to do's <laughs> mm-hmm. and they would have wine and cheese yeah, and of course. talk and be of nice course. and like, Sam, what you going to do about this? Hey, you're going to make sure this happens. Yes. And like, what you going to do about those things? Yes. I was like, you mean the people who live here yes. who are doing the same things that you're doing? <laughs> that whole other group. And then I had to find the authentic me and go back into their meetings and say, so let's talk about a few things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do realize that anyone in any one of these neighborhoods has cable. Yeah. They watch TV just like you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means they see the same things you see. Mm-hmm. They probably want the same thing you want. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about that? It's like they watch HG- HGTV. Yeah. Yeah. They want a nice house. Mm-hmm. They want all these different things. Um, so let's not judge. Mm-hmm. Let's just try to think about how can we help. Yeah. So then I got people like, oh, well, you know, I want to understand what can we do? How can we do this? Can we do this? Mm-hmm. Can we do that? And I'm like, okay, now I got you. Come on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so right. I've been able to turn some of those things around. And then I had to go in the neighborhood, and I mean, I went in the neighborhood. Poverty, yeah. And I had to go in and have sit down and conversation, and I can be honest at times, it was a little fear at times. So sure. I don't yeah. know where I'm going, what I'm doing, but I went. Um, and in those moments, I heard people just expressing all the frustrations, and they were real frustrations, and mm-hmm. I understood exactly what they did. And I used that as inspiration. Yeah. And then I would march on downtown, and I was an advocate. So all these people that do all this stuff, I did this stuff. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would go right down the office, down right down to the mayor's office, uh, ask for a meeting with the mayor, and because of, over time I was able to do what I did, I could get a meeting with the mayor, mm-hmm. sit down and talk to her. Mm-hmm. And the mayor has the power in Baton Rouge. Council has to authorize everything, but the mayor is every, in charge. Mm, interesting. So I had to go and I talked, and I knew everybody on her team. Mm-hmm. I did the work. Yeah. I made the relationships. I got all the stuff that I needed. And our organization just continued to thrive because then I was going in and she was interested in what I had to say. The mayor before, he was very interested in what I had to say. The mayor before that was interested. And these were black, white, Republican, and Democrat. Mm -hmm. Because I learned the process. Mm -hmm. And the key was understanding the system, as broken and flawed as it may be, Mm -hmm. if I can navigate it, I can get the things that the people need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was my mission. That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. And it built a reputation that people were willing to do what I wanted them to do. When something new was happening, they called me. They were When they were convened, I always got an invitation. Yeah. I was in the room. I was in the mix. Mm-hmm. I prefer that version yeah. of advocacy. Because mm-hmm. sure. to me, I feel like I was well, able to It was to built get on trust, things. the key And word. it was all about trust in yeah. those moments. And putting in the work. And doing the work, yeah, because the work. doing the work is then how they continue to trust. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'll respect him. Mm-hmm. I'll call he's him gonna next time. He's going to do the same time. he said he's going to do. I'll mm-hmm. get him at the table. He'll yeah. bring the people to the table. And over time, I got frustrated. I mean, I led a whole charge. I was ready to tell the mayor, you're not doing enough in, in uh, mm-hmm. affordable housing. Yeah. And I got the pushback on, well, I mean, we don't know what to do. I said, but that doesn't mean you do do anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? New Orleans, after Katrina, did the work and identified they needed 30,000 units of affordable housing. What's our number? Mm. I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> said, don't you want to know? Don't you want to know? <laughs> I mean, that was me in the meeting. I mean, right. So this big open yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't care if it was yeah. 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 Don't you want to know? Yeah. Don't you want to know? Yeah. yeah. And he said, well, I want to know. Right. And because I didn't get the I didn't get the feedback, I went and found the money. Yeah. And I hired a, a UNC Greensboro to come in and do a study for us mm. so we could identify what our number was. Yeah. So that then I could continue to do the work with the mayor's office. Mm-hmm. And eventually they took ownership of it. Yeah. And today they talk about that work from that particular study. That's what I like to do yeah. mm-hmm. is, okay, let's get past some of the things that get in the way. So yeah. I think that's what that job taught me how to do all of that. And that's yeah. what prepared me to do this. Um, I'm not saying I was looking to retire by coming here, <laughs> but I didn't know I was coming here to work as hard as I want yeah. to be working. Uh-huh. So I'm okay with that. Because you're 52. And it's to keep me You get young. to be 52 and you're like, yeah. whoa, I got to climb this high, high mountain again? Right. Yeah. And and ultimately, I like my kids are what keep me young. Yeah. When I send them a picture, I'm buying these sneakers and they're like, yeah, yeah those are good dads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Versus put those back yep. yeah, right put now. Those don't back, put right. that don't on. Buy those, right. So I'd have those moments where yeah. that's how I stay young. This job yeah. is going to keep me young because yeah. I can't sit back on, yeah. you know, can't just relax. On your laurels, that's for sure. But I'll tie that into what is the city manager? Mm. So one, I did not grow up in government as I've described. Mm-hmm. I did not do this work before. This is an untraditional approach that council mm-hmm. has taken to pick me. Yeah. Um, so I am thankful that they did it and I'm thankful that they appreciate that there's a different perspective that mm-hmm. I might bring to it. Mm-hmm. So with not having this deep background in government, I studied government. Like mm-hmm. I said, it's understanding the system flawed and broken as it may be. Mm-hmm. I studied the system. I know the things that don't work. And now I'm trying to tinker under the hood. Mm-hmm. So my job is that I'm the chief administrative officer, chief executive officer for the city, mm-hmm. the government, the organization. Mm-hmm. So my pen is where everything lands. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that declares emergencies for the city. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that has to make sure that we are ready to respond in a, in a disaster of any kind. I present, I prepare and present a budget to council mm. for the entire city operation. Mm. And then council decides if everything is okay. And then they adopt said budget. And then I use that budget to then deploy run, to do the yeah, work. Run the city. Mm-hmm. And I run yeah. the city. Yeah. So I'm responsible for making sure that trash trucks roll, mm-hmm. that leaves the buses get picked leave. up, that yeah. buses are moving, mm. that uh, police department. we get the snow <laughs> off the ground. Human services. The police department is doing what it's supposed yeah. to do, mm. that we are very, very concerned about human services, human sure. interactions, human needs, yep. and getting those things. We have human rights and yep. civilian oversight. So all of those departments that make up the city government are all accountable to me. Huh. They're accountable to me, though, through a deputy structure. Right. So I have two deputies. I'll have a third soon. And Thank those God. three deputies. <laughs> you got a third. Right. Those yeah, three right. deputies have portfolios. Right. And so there's a... There's a racial equity, diversity, and inclusion portfolio and an operations portfolio. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to figure out what that third portfolio is. That ensures that all those people don't report to me because there's 32 odd people <laughs> that be represent. Impossible to do a great job. Can't do that. Yeah. It, and honestly, I wouldn't be able to. They get say anything five or six done. direct reports is really the max you should have. That's true. Is that right? It is true. Absolutely. Don't go above six if you want to be effective in your job because then you're just meeting with people all day long and you can't get any work done. It doesn't yeah, work. It's literally the way. Yeah. It is yeah. how it is. Hence yeah. why I'm getting a third deputy. Good for you. That's what I'm so, saying. I'm impressed. Good for yes, you. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna have a third one, yeah. and and that is. Not even traditional because a city of this size, three deputies is too many. Yeah. If is you right? look at it from a comparison. But for Charlottesville, place. we're a special case. But for case. Charlottesville, <laughs> sure. who punches above his weight class, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. with nine strategic outcome yeah, areas right. and a commitment to it. Jedi, and that, right, I must have right. three. That's right. So That's right. Um, yeah. my goal is to set the structure right so that it works. So, yeah, all of that <laughs> I am responsible for. Huh. So yeah. can you use the word burden? You feel yeah, that's a that's a doozy, huh? Yeah. 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 So what were they like? Hey, here's the job description. Just like rolled out of like a. (laughs) So what's funny is I didn't even go. I didn't even go (laughs) study the city manager (laughs) job description when I was thinking about saying yes. I I wouldn't have done it either. Do this. (laughs) I've been in the space for two years, so I'd gotten you know I gotten a feel for it. I thought I knew, but there were things I didn't really know. I mean, here's some other examples of how big the job is. So the Ravana Water and Sewer Authority Mm -hmm. and the Solid Waste Boards, those are critical infrastructure systems Mm -hmm. that are entities that are multi-jurisdictional. Well, I learned Mm -hmm. as the city manager, one of those boards, I'm the vice chair Mm -hmm. automatically. And I'm the secretary treasurer on the other one (laughs) automatically. Automatically. Just because of the seat that I hold. (laughs) And I said, well, that almost said a bad word. (laughs) That means that I can't. Just go to the meeting 
and you know prepare a little bit yeah. and just be there. No, I got to really prepare. You got to actually know what's you know going on. And just because my life is what it is, the very first meeting. Sure. I'm elected vice chair. Oh, and the chair's not going to be here today, so you got to run the meeting. Unbelievable. That that is what it's like, though. Got to be ready. Uh, that I mean, my my deal is different ready. than your deal, but that does not sound unfamiliar yes. to me. <laughs> got to be ready. Correct. I mean, and in my, in my past job as the ED yeah. for this organization, I felt the same. Yeah. Always got to be ready. Always. In that moment, I didn't you have all the You always have to be resources. ready to lead. Yeah, well, you don't have all the information. You didn't have time to read the report, yeah. and you don't have an agenda that's like tight, right? And you I didn't have, have a team. I didn't have a big enough team in that environment, yeah. so I had to learn how to do all that stuff you myself. Navigate. Yeah, navigate. Here, I got 10 people I can call to help me do yeah. some of these things. But even that's work. Yeah, yeah. sure. You got to mobilize people. And they better do it right. Yeah, then we got to mobilize yeah. them. <laughs> I mean, Terry Bentley is my assistant. She is the mastermind behind my calendar. Yeah. yeah. It is so I hear hard. Terry's amazing. Yeah. I have, I I, amazing. I've tried to let someone manage my calendar before. I'm it's a control rough. freak. Right. I couldn't do it. Yeah. And I told I Terry. I you have a choice now. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. And she told me, she's like, I'm going to need you to let this go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Terry's husband's the builder in town, right? Uh huh. Yeah. He's great. You're going to just have to let me do this. Yeah. He's super organized keep it on track yeah, yep. and I still am tempted at times I go move stuff around and she's like why did you move that and I'm like oh, you knew I moved it <laughs> yeah, I right. was sneaking she and doing that's right. yeah. but yeah. it's it's order yeah. and it's, it's order to the process it's a big chaotic process so mm -hmm. she's just reminding me leave that alone you got yeah. bigger fish to fry yeah. and do these things and let's get through it so yeah Glutton for punishment, yes. <laughs> Organizer, planner, dreamer. I'm all those things. Yeah, you're all those things. I am. I'm all those things. I just want to do good work. Yeah. That's really what I want to do. Well, is, okay, go ahead. No, I know we both I have got, so many questions, and, then, and, well, it's 10, and it's 10.30. Yeah. I mean, you ask yours, <laughs> yeah. and I ask mine, and I I'm going to release Sam. The, um, okay. My, I could go just, on forever. And, well, yeah, really well, this is, we'll yeah, have you're, you're, we'll about you back. We'll have you back in a year when you've implemented at least two or three of those priorities. That's right. That's right. When you're on number seven. Yeah. This whole thing... I can see a cynic saying, okay, that is literally impossible. Like the way yeah, this is set up, it is. The, it's not a surprise mm -hmm. that the city hasn't made well. a lot of progress, right? I it's agree. not a surprise that people are coming in and out and in and out and in and out, right? Yep. Because we're looking at the individual saying, well, he wasn't committed and she wasn't ready. Yeah. And, and, and I don't a believe cynic, that. Well, right. And, and a cynic could look at that and say, okay, but look at what's going on. Like mm -hmm. no one would succeed in this environment. So is there, not is there a feeling or are you not confident, but is there an argument to be like, while you are doing this job, there has to be some reformatting mm -hmm. of even what the job is there to breed be. success for you and whoever's next because it doesn't really seem sustainable. Mm -hmm. So this is the part of the show that I need to have the council listen to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just kick them they the last like 15 hear. minutes. Nobody want to Did send them job? the link. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Not so them, just move, scroll move to, to minute this 50. Yeah. This is what you want to hear. Yeah. So I, I think you are, you are really on it. Um, I will never talk bad about those who came before me. I know people have expressed various opinions uh, about the things and the people. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Because I honestly now know what it felt like. Yeah, for sure. I absolutely know what it felt like. Even without the extra chaos circling around me at this moment that some of them had, I understand what the impossibility is that is this position. And yeah, trying to do sure. That. I think the difference is, again, for me, what I looked at is different for me is that I didn't grow up in government, so mm -hmm. I'm not coming in trying to do it the traditional government way. Yeah, right, 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 right. Because I don't think this is a traditional place. It's not. That's the reason why this mm -hmm. might be the ingredient that was missing mm -hmm. uh, that might make that difference. Um, I want to believe that. You're a that. community builder. I'm, I am. I'm all about You've community. You've got the PR, yes. the writing, the yep. relationships, all that. That's yeah. what we actually kind of needed. And I think that I is know. that's probably it because you call, you, you look at that as – that could be perceived as arrogance. Yeah, because I think I'm extra, I'm special, I'm different. No, but I just think um, you have a proven track record of being successful in that role. That's what I rely on. Yeah, well, I mean, you've done it. You've laid but it down. But some of the I others mean, could have been more in that other vein that I described. Sure. That they've been in government and in this community, this is how you do it. Yeah. So I came here and I tried to do that. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to come here and sure. do that. But yeah. you got to know your land. you got to know your people. Yeah. Yeah. you got to know if it's possible. And then at some point, you kind of back up from it and say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to yep. try something else. Right. Yeah. But when you lose control, which we have lost control, mm -hmm. then it's really not about how you handle it. Yeah. It's how you recover from it. Yeah. Mm. So when 2017 happened, how did we bounce back? Yeah. The people who were here at the time could have survived. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how you recover from, from the moment because a traumatic it wasn't moment. a moment that we planned. Yeah. 
It was right. a surprise moment. It really wasn't as much as people say that, well, we knew they were coming. Well, we didn't have enough time right. to huh. be ready for the thing. Right. Yeah. When you're sitting and in the seat. And people came from all over the country. And, and then takes our local people that. got involved, too, yeah. on both sides. It wasn't just, you know. Well, and then and I am bound by the law. Right. Mm-hmm. I have to do what the law allows me to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not what I want to do. Yeah. Sure. That's yeah. the other thing. And I don't know that everybody understands that. Right. Um, that <laughs> I, because I might right. want to do right, it doesn't right, right. mean that I can do it. Yeah. And can is important in that moment because, mm-hmm. one, I'm not trying to get sued. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to go to jail. I'm not built for jail. That's not my place. <laughs> so <laughs> in that moment, <laughs> that's yeah. not what I want to deal with. Yeah. And outcome, nor yeah, yeah. do I want this city sued. Yeah. And I don't want our, I don't want our good money going to settlements. Sure. Yeah. When I could be helping somebody's life change. Literally. So I would yeah. rather cut off all of these lawsuits and mm-hmm. let's make sure these things can be done with that money instead. Mm-hmm. So I'm very conscious of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's being perfectly honest. It is impossible for anyone to walk into my office, sit down at my desk and say, yeah, I got this. Yeah. You're right. You can't. Right. I think you'd be yeah. fooling yourself if you do it. Yeah. Can I say that I haven't questioned why I've done this? I have a couple mm-hmm. times already in the almost 60 days that I've been in the role. Yeah. Just being honest, because yeah. I can be that. Um, but I showed up the next day. David and Goliath. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep Goliath. doing it. I'm going to try something yeah, else. Try something um, like right now. I mean, we had an issue burning right now with what has been labeled harassment of the homeless mm-hmm. in Market mm-hmm. Street Park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have a conflict that the law says, mm. the law on the books today, whether we like it or not, says Market Street Park is closed at 11 p.m. And, and, and meanwhile, you have a tent city starting to occur, right? And, there's and those a tent are the hard city decisions that is you got to deal there. with. It's growing, yeah. But the law that. says the park is closed mm. at 11 right. But p. people will spend m. that PR. Sam's not friendly to the homeless. Right. <laughs> if you enforce that so law, right? So that's the impossibility that I'm describing. Yeah. Right. The, again. And you have right, a huge right, heart right, for people. I am so very it's like matter of fact on a whole lot of stuff. The law says. Gotta leave the park at 11 p.m. 11 PM, that means the tent the has to get park packed up is and closed. Yeah, Eleven oh one, you yeah. are trespassing. Yeah. Huh. Okay. And you so I have to that. reconcile that. Right. That's hard. And I have police that's officers hard. whose job it is to do what? Enforce Force the law. The law. Hmm. Wow. So yeah, that's hard. It's a hard job because your but heart's what can there, I do? right? Right. Because what can I do? Yeah. Change the law. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. My pen may be strong. Yeah. Made that strong. Right. I don't have the authority. And that there's a process the to that. There's right. five people who have to vote on that, and there's a process for getting that done. It's called every two weeks, it council takes time. meeting. It takes time. So, and is the I energy going... there worth doing that, sure. or is your energy better spent doing Well, and, and big picture, does that things? actually solve the problem? Well, there right? you go. Right? Like, See, in you, the end, is that symptomatic? You're going exactly where I go. Well, yeah, vision. You got to have the Changing the law and saying that, okay, you can be in the park. Uh-huh. Did one it's, thing. It's symptomatic. It, it, it all it did was make sure that there won't be beef between the police Correct. and the unhoused. All did you that did. change their did What's that the change downstream the effect of, of the that? people yeah. in there? No. no not at what all. about the fact that now we have a tent city in the park? Correct. What about Which the is highly that, visible for the people to have businesses and they're like, okay, this is gonna impact commerce, right? And all the things. Being real, we all yeah. know who wants that yeah. out their front door. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Am not I ideal go- for anybody, but not then the, the people the with the test. The test is <laughs> the, the test is for the Sam Sanders who serves as city manager is what do I prioritize? Yeah. And whose argument do I prioritize in the right. moment? I'll have to admit, I can't prioritize right. what you see out your door at yeah. this particular No, 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 because and yeah, you have, and a lot sure. of it's gut and discretion and because all the things. there's yeah. a life in each one of those tents mm-hmm. that I'm now concerned about. Yeah, and you have to be. There's an experience the with my law enforcement officers that I'm now concerned yeah, about. Yeah, you have to be. Sure. There's a, up. what are we going to do next? What mm-hmm. are we going to do to get them out of this yeah. situation? Mm-hmm. The, all the things. Homelessness has faced this city for a long time. Yeah. But here I am now within almost 60 days feeling like this extra burden of, and you must solve it. Well, and the yeah. thing is, when you go to bed at <laughs> so night. So that's the impossibility. When you go to bed at night, there's a hundred things you got to be, but that, at least for me, would weigh on yeah. my heart. Those kinds of issues would sure. weigh on my heart. Just because you're, you human, though, you're a human being, right? You're Monday like, yeah. night was not easy for me. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen the meeting yeah. before, mm-hmm. except <laughs> online. I hadn't seen one live. I hadn't yeah. felt what that feels like when yeah. the attack is coming the way yeah. that it is. And I'll be perfectly honest, 
last week's public hearing about the zoning rewrite, mm. which is a very different audience. Yeah, that's I been, was troubled by it. Just that's, the same. that's been intense, too. So I'm just yeah. making that clear as well. Yeah. That room was filled on. with a bunch of white people. Yeah. Yeah. This room was not. So yeah. I got it coming from all directions. Yeah, you're getting it. You know, it seems it's like how you process our, our, our jobs mm-hmm. are seemingly very aligned with kind of our morals and points of view correct right a little easier that way yeah. right well because we you don't know, have to make me, that I, hard moral decisions well, that's what i'm saying it's like for yeah. me and as someone who has worked for her and is now yeah. i'm i can be like i'm gonna die on this hill there you go. i yeah. am teaching kids to read mm-hmm. bang right and there, there's not a lot of you yeah. know the methods can yeah. be can Different. be disputed sure. and we can mm-hmm. have sort of our talks but about we don't have how to make that hard decision that he's got to make well right i mean there aren't a lot of people being like well no yeah literacy is not important and then shouting at me right like i don't feel that and so this is the, the question into your office. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> the party right. that you're teaching literacy to children. Why are you teaching, are you teaching these kindergartners yeah, right. to read, right? right? So I guess that is the part that I just wonder from a from sort of a, a mm-hmm. health standpoint, you know, I mean, how how much of what you feel like you have to do as a responsible, you know, uh, city manager and a, a sort of person who has to run the city versus a guy who is a husband and a dad and a citizen of the world. I mean, are there times mm-hmm. when those two things are diametrically opposed? And I mean, how do you continue to do that? You know, I mean, how do you survive what, in that? Well, the emotional piece, moments? you got to stay is. emotionally well and balanced. Right. You're a human being. But those are the moments that <laughs> I, when I said in the past two months where I've questioned, why did I do that? Right. Right. That's, that's, yes. that's, that's what you're talking about. That's what I'm checking on myself. Yeah. 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 Checking yeah. on checking. myself. Yeah. Um, it is, I was there when I was asked, are you going to be the city manager? And I said, nope. Yeah, I had to think about it. I had already thought about it. So when right. the question came, my answer was no. Yeah. And it wasn't flippant. It was, I'd already thought about it. Sure. No, I don't want it. I'm yeah. not doing it. Um, even when everything fell off the bus 90 days after I got here. Right. I said no. Yeah. I wasn't ready. Yeah. That wasn't, I wasn't that was there. The right time. So yeah, it's, it's that. But my goal is to be human first. Yeah. Hmm. I can only do what I can do. Mm-hmm. And I can only do so much. And there can be 500 million things that need to be done, but I'm really trying to get one thing right right now. Right. And then as soon as I get that done, I'm going to try to get another yep, one thing right. Sure. And I might be working on five or six other things at the same time that I'm getting that one right, but I can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm trying to, uh, and I have to forgive myself because I'm one who takes on too much. Mm-hmm. And that's why the health part of it comes in. I take on too much. I, I, I want to fix you. everything. I want to <laughs> do it all. I want to save the, the world. Yeah. The I just want to save the world, damn it. But you can't I lose mean, yourself on that. Right, and you can't because boundaries. that's where you get yourself in trouble. Sure. Yeah. You, you, physical you will health take on too this, much. Yeah. You will not listen to your Mental body. Mental physical and health. My body is one that will throw me down. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get sick. <laughs> yep. I really, I don't get sick that often. But when I get sick, so sick. I'm going to be down. I'm going to be down for a while because it's like, you know what? You're going to try to get back up and get yeah. back to work, so I'm going to keep you down. Yeah. I've been and saving this run for you for a year. Close your yeah. eyes yeah, and you stop feel. thinking. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what happens yeah. with me. Yeah. Um, everybody reminds me. I have. <laughs> I swear I have so many people telling me they're praying for me. I welcome oh. it all. I appreciate it. Um, I do need to take care of myself. I have built in a mindful hour for myself each day. Oh, that's great. I get up every morning, and I walk my little dog for yeah. a whole hour. And she likes to walk, so we go. And it gives you yeah. time to. And I just mind. try not to think about anything. I don't yeah. check emails. Yeah. yeah. Just if anything, I might even go into Facebook world and see what's going on a little yeah. bit. For fun. And then I turn it off because yeah. I hate it. I yeah. don't understand <laughs> you know, social media. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just to check in to see a yeah. few things that I might be interested in, and that's it. Yeah. But I walk and I do that because I need to. Mm-hmm. I need to do more exercise. I have a gym membership. They don't see me that often. <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get myself there. Yeah. I've been offered a chance to go walking. Uh, uh, Ms. Howard sent sure. the page and said, come walk with me. Of course. Sure. I said, I want to, but you walk too fast. <laughs> and she's like, I know I do, but she's like, I'll slow down for you. I said, will you? I said, I don't really want to interfere with your workout. Yeah. She's like, I will, I will, I will. So I told her, we're going to plan that. We're going to do mm-hmm. that. I have been out on a walk with uh, Nikai Walker yeah. just recently. We went out a few weeks ago. I went before and I was like, let's, just, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> It is good for me to be able to do that. I like mm-hmm. the idea of doing that. So um, I got to take care of myself. Yeah. I got to figure out ways to do it because it is an impossible job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have to teach myself, forgive yourself for not getting everything done because you couldn't do it anyway. Mm. I walk huge. into work mm. every morning That's with this list of things. I try to make a short list of what I want to get done today, yeah. knowing that I'm not going to get it done. Yeah, yeah. sure. And then eventually I'm going to stop doing You're that. You're going to stop. Because I'm going to stop I'm at the five-year mark, and I've that. stopped doing that. You have Because it is. I, well, you no, I have the 25 things. The yeah. Hold on. You I have the 25 things. Yeah. 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 But, but not what you're going to do every day. Correct. But I've also given myself permission. Mislead you on air. Not to do it all every day. 
we, I used to do this too. I have to. You have to. You have to because you feel like that's what's telling, that's what's driving you. You want to not lose sight of what's driving you. But there's so much in you that is that if you stop planning out each day, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's advice. I mean, that's just really what it is. Yeah. Um, But yeah, for me, I have every two weeks a significant reminder of Mm. the things. Sure. That's what makes that's, it different. Yeah, yeah. true. And, <laughs> yeah. and it comes with various tenor and degrees. Yep. <laughs> and I take my seat at the end of the day is, and I pray that this is a good meeting. Yeah. And that we can get good work done mm-hmm. and it can learn something. Yeah. I always say that I want to learn something tonight. Yeah. And when folks are at the podium, they will notice I pay attention. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at them mm-hmm. and listening to what they say. I'm trying to get it. They see me typing. So this is a disclaimer to anybody. If you see me typing, it is not because I'm disconnected. I am recording mm-hmm. what I am hearing because I need to follow track. up on this yeah, and keep track. track. Later, I've even made a change to the city manager's report. I respond to community matters. Yeah. Um, the bigger issues, I will prepare a response and mm-hmm. give my take on it. That's great. Um, that's so people feel like they've been heard. That's I feel like that's what that's they right. want. So I'm trying to do the things that are trust building things that are genuine and that are just aimed at just yeah. being present. Let me ask the last question because I said, and we're super late, yep. but this has been so <laughs> important and good. Um, because it's a show celebrating black excellence as a black man, any additional responsibilities you feel on your shoulder relative to that in this town, or it's just about who you are as a human being and your leadership and what you want to do all of that but i model the behavior you want others to see yeah. and that they then can aspire to be if that's what they're looking for yeah. i mean that's me i don't want to lose myself i don't want to go off and cut somebody out and lose my job i'm mm-hmm. trying to do the good work trying to do the job trying to understand um, be honest and that's what i feel like i have stated clearly like if i had to come up with a platform for this mm-hmm. job i'm being honest and that's why I will sit in any civic association meeting because that's where they're very mad about sidewalks and, and when are you doing this and those trees, things. Trees, sidewalks. And mm-hmm. trees and all. Mm-hmm. And I will mm-hmm. tell them, we're not doing that. Lights. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like somebody before me may have lied to you and said they're going to do I'm not. I'm going to yeah. tell you that. Because no, it can't we with can't all do the other it. things. And they're yeah. like, why can't we do this? Why? Because we need to get some things right mm-hmm. inside. Yeah. I got to fix us so that we can help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're, I need to cancel this project. Do I think about how many people are going to be mad at me because we're yeah, going to cancel the project? Do. I do. Mm-hmm. But does that stop me from canceling the project? Mm-hmm. No, because it's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to reboot, refocus. You have to right size. Right. We have a lot of things that we've agreed to do because the city wants to punch above its weight class. So we sure. agree to everything that everyone asks us to do. Yeah. And then we don't think about the fact that I have a team that is stretched to an impossible degree. Yeah. And how are they ever going to get all this stuff done? I, mm. Ashley and is literally always that. running. Like, I've never seen her, like, physically not running yeah. to the next thing. <laughs> Doesn't make I've known sense. her. And our, I've cal- known her. <laughs> our calendar is yeah. our Tetris board. Yeah. yeah. So uh, right now, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not feeling fully effective. That yeah. is bothering me. Yeah. yeah. But, gotcha. but but that's when you forgive yourself yeah. and you start to you go back. To. And you go back and look at your calendar. Why does it look like that for me right now? Because I decided to prioritize a meeting with every single one of my department heads. Yeah. In the first 30 days. Direct report. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I wanted to get all of them. Yeah. My goal was to give a time for you to baby tell me what do I need to know. So what yeah. I'm hearing what is we need to, to cut some of our direct reports down. That's all. That's yeah. what Correct. I've taken from oh, you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so that you can absolutely. be effective. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm working. The third deputy means that the portfolios get shifted. Yeah. So we won't be doing all that running yeah. because we had to be able to slow down and stop and do some work. Too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We, in those meetings, we're running around. All we're doing is thinking. Yeah. I was at a conference a few months back and. Um, brilliant black woman standing up front and she had us all going and she said who's at the table i was like that's always a good question Mm -hmm. i always try to remember to think about asking that question she said but let me ask it this way who at the table is thinking and who is at the table that is doing yeah doing Mm -hmm. you need a mix Mm -hmm. you don't need a whole table full of thinkers that means you're not doing anything i was like you know what i've been saying that ever since Mm -hmm. that's great Mm -hmm. i'm trying to mix that up yeah that's actually a great note to end the show, and I love that. We need yeah. thinkers and doers. <clears throat> we need both. <clears throat> well, with that, we'll get out of here. Big thanks 
City manager Sam Sanders, who's going to learn nothing fun. else. His job yeah. is not very Easy. much fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. Price and I are like, gosh, we like the nonprofit so, sector. Yeah, that's why I have government. to go find it somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> right, the job. My, My thesis <laughs> is we'll not be applying for that job in 25 years when Sam leaves. Just remember uh, that and call me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now nah, he'll be, a, be around for a long time. But... For us, if you have ideas for the show, want to get in touch with us, social media on all platforms at United Way Seville, at City of Promise, or drop a note in the inbox and vision at unitedwayseville.org. Big thanks to Nadra, who supports our show. If you like what you hear, share this with your friends. Subscribe to your favorite podcast platform for new episodes every week. Uh, how, you know, if, if just sort of a final note, if people want to get involved or interested about how to reach out, read what you're publishing, or just kind of have a finger on the pulse, how do they do that? Yeah, there are a couple ways. Um, I'm going to be doing, my goal is to do some town hall meetings. I'm going to try to plan some specific conversations about specific topics. Um, but this Office of Community Solutions that I set up um, when I first got here is really meant to be the neighborhood connection. Um, and that is really where people need to, to come into. So Alex Ikafuna is the director of that office. And that's where we're receiving complaints, questions, and various things. And I want people to take advantage of the opportunity to do that. Uh, and then we're going to be trying to come out, now that I have a director of communications, we'll try to plan some things and then be able to get the word out. So you can call the office. Everybody knows how to call the city manager's <laughs> office. They all know how to contact you. Yeah, Sometimes they, on the show call. people do not know how to find somebody, but in your case. Yeah, they you know how to call the city manager's office. I have two very good people working those phones, and we'll we'll get back to them as soon as we possibly can. If you like what you hear, we got hundreds of other episodes. Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, wherever you get your podcasts. For Sam and Ravi, this is Bryce. We will see you next week.